What's up spray foamers? This is Aaron here back again from CJ Spray. Um, today we're going to talk some more spray equipment tech review and we're going to focus our efforts today on a pressure imbalance or an E24 in the Graco world. So these rules will kind of apply to any piece of equipment. We'll refer to it as the E24. That's kind of the most common and how people understand it. So at any rate, this is kind of how I sum it up, and this is how I'll go through and troubleshoot something. So we'll start with, you get an E24 on your machine. So we want to determine, is it an actual code or is it a false code? Uh, pretty easy to do. If your analog gauges are even, it's probably a false code. So if you follow that down, we're going to do our transducer test, and we're going to determine if it's a control board that's bad or a bad transducer. Um, that's a pretty easy test to do. We're not gonna get into it right now. I'm sure most people know how to do it. And I'm kinda waiting for a rig to come in with a bad transducer so I can do the test, record it, and then I'll get that online as well. So um, we're not gonna get too much into that. It's pretty basic. Um, we're gonna follow the actual E24 code down. So we determine we actually have a pressure imbalance. Our analog gauges are not gonna be equal. So then what we're gonna look for is, does the machine pressure up evenly initially and then it codes out while spraying? Or does the machine not pressure up evenly initially? Um, if the machine does not pressure up evenly right out of the gate, we have a supply problem. So it's either it's either a pump or lack of air, Y strainers plugged up, and then down below there you'll see I put displacement pump. So the way I characterize it is everything from the displacement pump back is feed system. So usually if it doesn't pressure up evenly right right away, I'll include the displacement pump as a possible problem to focus on. What I usually do is put it in recirc mode and I'll jog it just on a nice slow speed and I'll watch the analog gauges. Um, usually they'll just kind of bounce together, just every changeover they'll just kind of bounce. If they're not bouncing or one of them stops bouncing, Look for if it does it on an upstroke or a downstroke, and then you can determine if you think it's a bad packing or if it's a stuck check ball or a, a check ball that's not seating properly. Um, we're leaking fluid past it. We don't have pressure. So that's just a quick little thing that you can do. Just put it on a slow jog speed in recirc. Check for the two analog gauges that they're bouncing. If one of them doesn't bounce, look if it's on an up or a down stroke and you should be able to kind of narrow down that problem for a displacement pump. So real quick, what I'll do for these, I'll open up the Y strainer and I'll check the screen. Make sure before we do this, just a quick safety thought, um, make sure that the air is turned off to your transfer pump, obviously. You don't want to open that up and then you know start spilling material everywhere so turn the air off crack open your Y strainer and check your screen so we're kind of checking two things here real quick we're gonna check the screen to see if it's plugged up or if there's something going on there while we have that cap off um, grab a helper and grab a coffee can and hold it underneath that Y strainer and just have somebody give a little bit of air to that pump and you should have good flow coming out of that Y strainer port. So that's kind of testing the pump. We have air to the pump and the transfer pump feed hose. So if we have good flow there, I mean, you'll know if, if there's not good heavy flow, then there's a problem somewhere else. So that's kind of the quick and dirty on how to do that. So that is a supply problem, and that's what Graco would refer to as a fast E24 in their manual. Um, so yeah, those are some of those things. <clears throat> now back up to the machine pressures up evenly initially, and then it codes out while spraying. That means we have a restriction somewhere on the pressure side. Okay, so somewhere after the displacement pump, 
is our problem. What you're going to see with a restriction E24 on your pressure side is one of your gauges is going to just drain off. As soon as you pull the trigger, one side's going to just drain off, the other side's going to stay there or even climb a little bit. The side that's high is where your restriction is at, okay? So you're pressured up, you pull the trigger, your B side drains down, and your A side stays there. You have a restriction on your A side, okay? It's not letting that fluid out of the gun. It's staying pressurized in the system, and there's something restricting it or not allowing it to exit the gun and relieve that pressure. So that's a quick and easy way to find out which side to focus on. You know, you get a restriction, your A side gauge is way high, that's the problem. So focus on your A side. You don't even have to look at your B side at all. Um, so I usually focus on the gun. I mean, I put it in capital letters there so everyone can see it. It's usually a gun problem, 90% of the time. We have a restriction in the gun. You know, there's a plugged up check valve screen. There's a side seal problem. There's a crossover. There's something probably in the gun. So that's when you want to go into your toolbox and grab your spare gun um, and throw it on. And that way you can at least keep spraying for the day. Um, you know, from the gun back, if you if you're confident it's not the gun which just be thorough about that because a lot of people say that and sometimes it is the gun still even when you think it's not but from there back look at your hose your fluid manifold pressure relief valves um, heater which is very rare um, so pretty much anything after the displacement pump is what we're going to focus on so my main focus is the gun and then my second, if it's if I'm sure it's not the gun, I go back to a pressure relief valve. So what I'll do is just make sure that that valve is operable. Make sure that if you're in spray mode, that you're not having material going back to your drum. Because that would mean that your valve is not working and you're not going to build pressure. And that's a problem. Um, referring to the fluid manifold too, all those little fluid passages... Make sure there's not a chunk of something stuck in there. Uh, I've seen that quite a few times. You'll get a chunk of ISO, always on the A side usually. Um, you'll have a chunk of ISO or something in there. So just grab a drill bit or something and clean out all those fluid passages in your fluid manifold. Put your valve back together. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my quick matrix for an E24 code. If you follow this chart, you're gonna fix most of your problems. Real quick, there is a third type of E24 that you can get. I didn't put it on the matrix because it's a little bit different, but what it is is your machine will pressure up nice and even, and then as soon as you trigger, one side's gonna drop, I don't know, three to 600 PSI lower than the other side, and it'll hang right there. It'll maintain that kind of pressure differential, and it'll spray, and sometimes it'll give you a code, and sometimes it won't. What you wanna do there is add heat to the high side. So usually it's gonna be the B side for you closed cell guys. So add five degrees to your B side, um, and see if that brings that B side down a little bit. We're just trying to thin it out to match the viscosity of the A side. Um, <clears throat> cooling down the A side is sometimes an option. Not really all the time though, but whatever we need to do to match the viscosity so the pressures come nice and even, um, that's when you're gonna make your best foam and get the best yield out of it. So just another quick thought with an E24. Uh, temperatures kind of plays a big part, especially where we're at up in Minnesota. Mm -hmm.